Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk all things Commander. And today we are doing the top cards from Murders at Karlov Manor. Uh, I, I will have to say that this set has a lot of good cards, or at least a lot of role players. We have a list of about 30 cards. We're not going to talk about all of them on the podcast, uh, but they our, our complete ranking and, and grading will be listed in the comments in the show notes, so you can check that out. But we are just going to talk about uh, the top 15-ish cards, somewhere between there. Uh, we, we picked some of the most popular cards and then some cards that may be a bit controversial. Uh, so join with me today is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How are you doing, Seth? I'm doing good. Excited to talk about some new magic cards. Grim, the Asian Avenger, what's up? Good morning. I'm pretty excited to go over this. The set looks pretty fun. And then Tomer, Budget Magic, how you doing? Good evening. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cards. Really happy and excited to talk about cards. I like cards. Yeah, speaking of a lot of cards, uh, this list spans all of Karlov Manor. So the main set, which is MKM, uh, the commander set, MKC, and then the clue supplemental, which is CLU. Uh, so before we get into that, today's show is brought to you by Ultimate Guard, premium protection for your trading cards. All the gaming accessories you see on our channel are supplied by Ultimate Guard. Uh, so you can check them out at ultimateguard.com. And also Card Conduit, the easiest way to sell your magic cards. Card Conduit lets you skip all the typing, time, and work associated with buy listing. Uh, the curated service lets you send in as many cards as you want with buy list value of $1 more and you pay just a 5% service fee. You can use their sorted service where you list and sort your cards and pay only 2%. You get a detailed report and fast payment once your order is processed. So you can get 10% off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash mtggoldfish. And then now, gentlemen, it's time for the ultimate guard comment of the <laughs> week. And last week we had a spicy episode about whether CDH should be split out. And uh, the, the, top, the top comment was from Glaceon BM. I love that every conversation about the format devolves into the RC should do their job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> can't say the wrong. It sounds a little harsh. <laughs> that sounds harsh. <laughs> but, I mean... <laughs> I mean, if they just commander, do their job, commander if, needs a lot of love. <laughs> if they commander just needs a love of attention, yeah. If they just do their job, this wouldn't be the comment of the week. It says. <laughs> <laughs> do you think they could Stop do any job? Oil <laughs> on the flames or fanning the fire, whatever the expression is. <laughs> I love the RC. Uh, yeah, we like the RC. Yeah, uh, me too. Yeah. Okay. So, murders of Karloff Manor. Okay, so we're gonna. We're gonna we're gonna do a tier list today. Uh, as a reminder, if you don't remember what our tier list ranking is, S is a format staple. So you you, you play it in like basically all the decks you can that that support its color. A is strong across many decks. B is strong in specific decks, and then C is kind of just like mediocre filler, and then D is like super niche. Like you have a very specific reason uh, for playing the card. So let's kick things off uh, with one of the, I guess, most obvious best cards of the set. And that would be Archdruid's Charm. So that is a green instant at triple green. Uh, three mana value. Choose one. Search your library for a creature or land card and reveal it. Put it onto the battlefield tapped if it's a land. Otherwise, put it in your hand. Then shuffle. Uh, that, that's one of the modes. The other mode is put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. And then mode three is exile target artifact or enchantment. Now, everyone slam dunk gave this an S. Krim, the green hater, gave it an A for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why you would not play this if you're in green. <laughs> well, okay. So I, I'm curious, like... S means that we put it in every deck that has the color, right? Yeah. Triple Basically. Green is kind of hard, right? I mean, that is, if there's I, any I, drawbacks to the five card, C it's deck, triple green. It's I, base I green, say, right? <laughs> okay. Well, I would I mean, say five it, color would be tough, but like, yeah, I would try to fit it in there at least. I, like, I don't, I don't play Archmage's Charm in every deck that has blue. <laughs> 
Yeah, but I don't think Archmage's oh, this is close to this is like a hundred times better than Archmage's charm. As far as commander, competitive like sixty card formats may be different, but I think this is significantly better than Archmage's charm and commander. I mean, it's an, it's obviously a house, right? This is a very good card, and I am under no delusions about that. It's more of just about like. I, I guess triple green is a real cost, right? Triple blue cards are a real cost. Triple black, anything like that. Okay, maybe not mono black, but if I'm outside of like mono color decks, triple of any color is a real cost. So if you are in green, so if you are playing a five color deck and, and your deck actually has a green component, you are probably base green because green is where all your ramp is and it allows you to ramp and fix all your other colors. So the triple green doesn't sound bad, but it's not even bad if you don't play it on curve. Like, you don't yeah. need to play it. I guess that's fair. On turn three. Mm -hmm. This could be a turn six, bring in a glacial chasm, right? This could be a you turn six, bring in a, a maze of Ith or a field of the dead or yeah. whatever. There is no such thing as three mana, non-basic land ramp. Let okay. alone three an mana, non-basic land ramp. <laughs> that instant speed, plus it fights or bites. It's not even a fight. Your creatures even have to live. Uh, and then uh, it also exiles an artifact or enchantment. Like the I love first that. mode alone at sorcery speed would put it at S for me. <laughs> Let but alone it's like instant, instant it's in all instant of these. speed, right? It it's instant basically speed. yeah. Like uh, then then I I I look. You don't gotta twist and convince me. This this card is very good. The only thing that I was concerned about is the triple green cost. But yeah, like at the same time. It was already a high A bordering like S anyways, because this card is absurd. You don't gotta convince me. I believe you. This card is basically like if you took Beast Within, it basically takes out all the permanents that Beast Within usually does. Creature enchantment artifacts those are the most common ones. And then on top of that, if you need a creature at instant speed, you can go tutor it up. And then I'm going to put it in all my five color decks, actually, because, yeah, I don't care about curving out with it because a five color deck, generally speaking, is going to have enough non-basics that are going to support Field of the Dead. And this is instant speed. Take your Field of Dead, Dead, put it onto the battlefield, you know? Or you already have Field of the Dead? Okay, instant speed, tutor up your Fisu if that's a copy Field of the Dead. <laughs> like, yeah, even in five color decks, I don't care. Like, triple green is tough to cast sometimes, but, like, yeah, I, I'm fine casting this, like, turn six or whatever to get my feel of that or whatever. And it also It's so much value. Oh, it's so much value. Yeah, and it also makes other utility lands better, like uh, Richard's Mystic Sanctuaries that he tries to squeeze in every deck, or, like, Bajukabog. I know one of the big complaints when we were tier ranking the lands was, like, oh, it never comes down at the time I want it. Well, with this, it's always going to come down on the turn when someone's, you know, casting their living end or trying to reanimate something, say, Escar. It's, this card's wild. It's so good. I like to the point where I'm kind of surprised they printed it good, like almost too good. Good. It's, and it, can you it's imagine? also the best normal ramp, right? Because turn oh. three, you play this, you can get an ancient tomb or temple of the false god, and mm -hmm. then you're ramping two mana. So it's just like better than explosive vegetation uh, and yeah. whatnot. In addition to all the utility we gave you, like when people play crop rotation, that takes you down a land, right? This is actually just straight up ramp. And uh, fog meta baby glacial chasm. <laughs> like, but can like, you imagine in response in, right? to attackers? Like oh, you're being so swung good. in for yeah. lethal. You you tutor up the glacial chasm onto the battlefield to fog them. Oh my yep. god. Yeah. Like I'm not a fog believer, but this <laughs> this would make me a believer. <laughs> That, I mean, this is all just, that's just three mana fog, Tober. You can play fog for one mana, but yes, <laughs> that, yeah, that but is I a real use case. <laughs> I don't like fogs that just do fog. This is a fog that also kills a creature, kills an, exiles yeah. the one ring, even, yeah. Yeah. or like finds ring. a creature that I need, you know? If I need a crater hoof for next turn to win the game, I can grab that too. Yeah. Silly ass. Straight ass. Okay. I believe her though. A. So he he, I, he I, says I it's hard I, to cast, but he doesn't play enough green. Uh, <laughs> I don't play five green. color green. So like right. again, like, I also said I I bumped up to an S because like yo that card is very good. It's insane. If you play green, it's a staple, right? But like I guess yeah, like I was the only concern and reservation I had was the triple green cost. But as you talk about it, it's true. Like I guess it doesn't really you matter. Know, Yava because, Maya also just fixes this too, right? Yeah, you could have, yeah which you could <laughs> also, island island yeah, Yava Maya or Struid's charm. You're like gotcha. <laughs> Uh, okay, my personal favorite for the set, art, or not, no, 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 that, that is my favorite. The second favorite is Trouble in Pairs, two white-white enchantment. If an opponent would begin an extra turn, that player skips that turn, okay, just random stacks piece. Whenever an opponent attacks I mean, you for good. two or more creatures, draws their second card each turn, or casts their second spell each turn, you draw a card. 
Uh, S across the board, <laughs> except for Crimbet A again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like A sounds is... bad, but it's not. Right? Like, it's just re- it's really good, but I don't know. I mean. I, I, I guess I want to see how it plays. I haven't gotten to see it in action too much, right? Is we had the not- video that we played, uh, like, you know, where we, we, we filmed Commander Clash, you know, we saw that. But other than that, I, I need to play with it more. I just haven't seen it enough. And, I mean, in theory, it looks like it'd be really good, right? It's- and I also love anything that shuts down any anybody extra turn players. So I love that alone. I think that's uh, the then on, the bonus text on this one, really. That's the bonus. Text, right? <laughs> Why does he do that on there? That's so weird. But, <laughs> but I do believe that yeah, there's a chance we're in a turn cycle. Maybe you draw three cards, right? And then you and then and then the next opponent, you'll like you'll draw three cards from one opponent's turn. Then maybe potentially after a whole table goes around, potentially like five to eight cards even. Who but, knows? Like I I play Frag Scene Arena. Every black tech, and it's three mana, and it draws me one Plus card a turn, mind. and I lose a life, and I still stand behind playing Fraxine Arena and all my black decks. This is like somewhere in between that and like Ristic Study. Is this like White Ristic Study? I feel like in practice, you're going to be drawing three or four cards each turn cycle. It might be the best white card since Smothering Tithe, honestly. Like, that's how strong I think this card is. I know some people are like, oh, Smuggler Share, and it's kind of like Smuggler. No, it's, that's not. Don't even don't even say Smuggler Share. Like, get those words out of your mouth. It's not anything like Smuggler Share. <laughs> smuggler Share does, like, one-third of what this card does. Uh, it's not even close. So, yeah, I think this card is, like, another S tier. I would play this five color all the way to Mono White every time. Like, so good. I think if you draw two cards off this per turn cycle. Personally, I think that was already good enough. Like, I'd be very happy with that. If this card says on on your upkeep or something, draw two cards, I'd be happy with that, honestly. I don't know about you guys, but like, I think this could draw like three, four cards per turn cycle sometimes. And then it's like absurdly good, right? Is that not yeah. busted? Would you be happy if it just said like, draw two on your upkeep? Or would you, do you expect... Or require it to draw more than that. I'd probably play this if it drew one a turn. I play Frexian Arena. I'm a Frexian <laughs> Arena player. So. <laughs> and it's also got a little, a little ghostly prison in there, right? Where, like, it, oh. it discourages your opponent from attacking you because if they attack you with two things, then you're going to draw a card. So it's going to save you some damage throughout the game, too. Like, it, it does everything. It's Ristic Study without the annoying. Like, do you pay the one? Do you pay the one? You're, you're going to draw a million cards. In practice, this is actually a million times better than Smuggler Share because Smuggler Share is templated in a way that people can draw out their end step and you don't benefit from the Smuggler Shares. But this, you just draw as soon as they draw, uh, they do their thing. And it's actually kind of relevant because like, they can play their second spell and then you can draw a counter spell off the card and then counter, right? Like, there, There's actually like some merit to that, but... There's no way to play around this. Like, you can play around Ristic Study or something, right? Like, if someone's playing around all three of these modes, like, they're playing very, very slow. Like, you, you've, like, stacked them into oblivion. So I think most people will not be able to play around this. And if playing around it means not attacking me, that's also, like, very good, <laughs> right? And if they're only playing one spell and not drawing anything, like, okay, that's, like, perfect for four mana. But this will draw a lot of cards. I think Question. this is actually better than It's S-Z. not a May. Right? Mill them out. You don't have to. <laughs> Mill them out. <laughs> you know like, what? Like, hey. When I played this card, that and Smuggler Share, I drew like literally my entire deck. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. yeah so man. Do you really agree? Good. It's so pushed. And I don't know why you have to skip an extra turn. What does it got to do with trouble in pairs? <laughs> I, Honestly, like... why not? Anything that poops on extra turn decks, that makes me happy. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, like, uh, I got to ask you then. Do you now agree if cards like this are coming down the pipeline, can we not have more Orcish Bowmasters? Can we just not have more Notion Thieves? Like, why Why is it that no. this is acceptable, but no. Notion Thieves is not? No. You're not allowed. You're not as allowed. Long as, they don't, as long as they don't work with wheels, I'm totally fine with them. They, they have to be templated in the way that, like, if your opponents are doing the drawing, then yes, you can hit them. But, they, like, I don't like the wheels. I don't know. They should have just replaced the extra turn text with your opponents can't cast Notion Thief. (laughs) (laughs) It should be if if your opponent would buy you a card draw. No, if if drawing a card would trigger something from your opponent, like, like, instead draw two cards. cards. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I think 
Also, <laughs> small shout out to the certain type of decks is kind of like pseudo group hug. There's a lot of decks these days in commanders, like Nella Nelly uh, Borka, which is the leader of that face commander. That one incentivizes uh, each other to attack each other by saying, oh, if you attack one of my opponents, you can draw a card. Well, with this on the battlefield, your opponents get to draw a card, but then you get to draw two cards. So I'm putting it in my Zedru deck, which runs a lot of those effects. I run also all the Howling Mines, which guarantee triggers off trouble in pairs, right? If your opponent is going to be drawing an extra turn per um, on their turn with like a Howling Mine effect, then I'm going to be drawing an extra card on every single person's turn as well off that too. So you can you can even build around it too. And then not only is it a generically powerful card, but it's a, a card you can actually synergize with too. And then it's just silly. <laughs> All I see is trouble in Paris is mill three. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if I'm going to die by checking myself by drawing cards, I, I think that that'll win, you know? Yeah, I'll accept that. <laughs> you draw me to death, I'll, I'll go out four happy. mana to mill yourself? Okay, this is good. <laughs> I, I like this very, little, very new. It just goes to my grip. hand instead of the graveyard. I like it, Krim. Build me some more. <laughs> <laughs> Bury right, me uh, with a full grip. That's all I ask. <laughs> unexplained absence. Another white card. It's an instant four mana for each player. Exile up to one target non-land permanent that player controls. For each permanent exile this way, its controller cloaks the top card of their library. So that's basically a manifest with ward two. Uh... Oh, oh, this one is saucy. So Krim at S, Tomer and Seth at A, Richard at C. Cool. So Krim, you're high on this card. You're this high on this This isn't even a, a one for one. This is not just a I pick off one person's card. I'm picking off everybody's card. Mm -hmm. How is that at a C, Richard? This is so good. I now, mean, this probably, I put this at as an S because this is like, I'm sorry, this is exactly my kind of magic. <laughs> And like the, the, the so because it falls right in line, it's this really good answer. It picks off the best threat from everybody's board for four mana at instant speed. Ah, I can't ask for this is super utter end. Right, this like, is like this is so good. I, I mean, this is like chaos warp for each opponent, right? Right, like for one extra mana, you're chaos warping. And, but they can never get it back, too. It's exiled, so it's like yeah. even better than the Chaos Warp effect. Yeah, exactly. I think this card's cracked, is it not? It's really good. I mean, it's good. It if is I... worth pointing out that you are replacing it with something. It's not just clean, like, the thing is gone. And it's a little scary because, like Chaos Warp, which I know, Tomer, you've had some bad experiences with in the past, but you could spin them into something pretty good that's face down that ends up getting, fl uh, you know, flip face up and getting you. I still think it's good. Only if it's a creature, though. If it's a creep, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, if it's, if it's well, not a creep, it's still a two, two or whatnot. But yeah, it's yeah, still then, a, it's a two, two, two either way. Then it's just a two two. Who cares? Yeah. Right? Like, like, like generous gift. We don't care about the three three yeah. so much. And also, Chaos Orc could put it directly onto the battlefield face up, basically. This one, if it's like a big thing, like let's say it hit your Elish Norn or something, you still have to pay all the mana to flip up Elish Norn too. And if it's like an ETB creature, it's even worse. You know, like yeah. the, the things you could possibly hit is so much smaller than Chaos Warp, in my opinion. Because you could so only flip up creatures. I mean, you, and, you kind and of just pretend you got nice. removed. <laughs> right? Yeah. It, it, but S Richard's It's C. not just like you pretend you removed it. You did remove it. It's exile. I, yeah. Like, it's, it's straight it's up different. Like if you're trying to attack for lethal or something, it doesn't remove, right? Like they get a body they can chump with. But for most purposes, it's like a generous gift, right? It's it so exiles much though. Better so than it's a much stronger gift. than that, but it doesn't hit land. So it's not land. But the big sticking point is it's four mana, right? And yes, you get to hit three other players stuff but chances are you didn't care about it right like that that's where i i don't like this value that doesn't matter and you just angered everyone by removing their stuff for no <laughs> I reason do that anyway right? so when you want matter. to use your spot removal you want to be saving your butt or going for lethal and you need to make it as efficient as possible right and you know generous gifts versus swords is already a big price right because you're paying three mana for flexibility versus one mana but now you're gonna go to four mana like, that's very hard. And at four mana, you're in sweeper territory. You can just clean sweep the board. People don't get mad at you in the same way because you're not explicitly pointing to the permanent and removing it. And then if they're mad at you, well, all their permanents got wiped. So you got some you got some reprieve from that. So I don't like it. Like, where would you put it in your deck? Would you cut your generous gift? Would you cut a sweeper? Yeah. Like, what are you cutting yeah, to put cut this in your deck? I would cut a, either A, a spot removal or a generous gift, right? So for generous gift, I could pay 
one more mana and get two more generous gifts. On so top you're of cutting it. generous and gifts out of your deck for this? I, I don't see why I wouldn't. Oh, like this, that's... this card is so good. It's four mana, and I get to Ooh, exile three. I think Richard permits. might have gotten me a little. Bit. I'm gonna... I, I kind of agree. Sometimes <laughs> you don't have other targets you want to get rid of, and you do annoy. Like you can pick people. off someone's clue, but was that really the, uh, a good no. use of this? No, you hit your own clue. You hit your own clue, and then it's like a four for one. Oh yeah, you can I, exile I, your. You can exile your. You stuff can exile too. your own. Yeah, for you each can exile point. your own stuff. Oh. Th this is this is so it good. Is good. Right? It is good. It's definitely a good card. I don't know if I'd play it over generous gift. I might write it alongside generous gift. I don't think it goes in every deck though. Like I, I don't. What? There's a lot of there's a lot if of you good play white. There's a lot of good white removal this. though, right? Like there's it's not like there's oh. a lack of options between swords and paths and generous gifts and yeah, but all the sweepers farewells like uh, there's a lot of a lot of competition. competition. Okay. Why fire off my farewell right now when only a few key targets are bothering me, right? I can save my farewell for when they think they're safe to deploy it and hmm. truly reset the game. So, like, <laughs> that is, this just gives me God. another layer of card I can cast before I cast farewell. Yeah. So that's kind of annoying no... the table now, and they might swing their creatures at you. Yeah, yeah like, you just made you. everyone your enemy at once. All right, all right. <laughs> For everyone that is used to arch enemy, you know this card is the nuts, because you don't care to piss off the table. Because all you do is piss off the table anyways. So this is just going to make sure that you can be as mad as you want at me, but your best thing is gone. So that's what I care about. <laughs> And, All right. and that's huge. So now I can permanently poo poo on the artifact deck for just existing. And then on top of that, I can go and get two other cards out of the way as well. Like, I, there's no way this card is not the truth. This card is so good. Like, like the only reason I think of it is like you're a very aggressive deck and you don't want to play sweepers and like you need to hit someone's like big bomb and there's like a ghostly prison somewhere else. But it's also four mana. Uh, so I. I don't know. I, I, I can't think of where I would put it in my deck, so that's why I gave it a C. Like, I'm not cutting Generous Gift. If I'm playing more than one spot removal, it would be Excise the Imperfect or Stroke of Midnight uh, or something. There's right? no even, way. Even Source the Plowshares. Those. At least that's one mana, right? But four mana is a tough... I could settle the wreckage you at, at four mana, right? I'm holding four mana up the whole game. Like, it's, it's tough. Yeah, but you... You don't settle the wreckage, the two permanents that are also problematic after player two attacks you, right? This now picks the best thing off of every board, and I just don't see how that isn't an S tier. For a white, one white and three, but you I pay this every time. Revelation. You could just fail. Yeah, but then you blow you up all your own stuff. Version. But then yeah. you blow up your own stuff. This is this <laughs> is allowing you to True. enable and further your game plan. This is huge. It's a solid both egg. make very it's a good solid. Egg, yeah. <laughs> solid. I'm expecting I'm to see a lot of this. Okay, you got. You, I don't trust Seth. That's good game. <laughs> I don't see him playing it. I don't see him playing it. We got. I, yeah. I think I'll play. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, another A card we have here is Anne's Rag, uh, the Quake Mole, uh, eight four Mole God, at four mana. It's a legendary. Uh, when it becomes blocked, untap each creature you control. After this combat, there's an additional combat phase. For seven mana, it must be blocked each combat this turn, if able. So Seth and Krim are the gruel smashy smashies at A. <laughs> Tor and I are at B. So I will say... Let's go in most decks. Okay, so I will say it's really a B card, but I bumped it up to an A because I think this is going to be a really popular commander from the set. It's hard to figure out how to handle cards that you can play as your commander. I feel like there should be some bonus points for like uh, one of the most played commanders from the set that everyone's building their deck around. So I think in the 99, it's definitely a B card, but I also expect this to be like one of the handful of like two or three most popular commanders. So for me, that, that bumped it up to the A. I feel like it's a really good commander as far as playing in the 99 i don't know i guess you can just throw it in a gruel deck for value and it's probably okay especially if you have like enough ways to haste it in but i really think it's like it's a commander right like that's that's how this card is going to be used yeah and that's exactly without going in you know reiterating what seth has pretty much said that's exactly why it's at an a for me this is a really strong commander and you could build it numerous ways if you want to build it voltron if you want to build it however you want to build it right like the point here is that this is an 8-4, so this is a very quick clock. So if they don't block, they're in trouble. If they do block, they're in trouble. So I think this is one of those commanders that are unfortunately going to have to die on sight. Yes. Uh, that's why I don't... I, I'm kind of 
not so high on this card. Like, yes, it's very powerful, but the thing needs it needs a lot to be built around. It doesn't have any built-in resiliency to removal. It needs haste, and then it needs a way to actually uh, force blocks. Like, yeah, you could pay seven extra mana to force the blocks by itself, but that's not ideal. You want to use something a little bit cheaper to force those blocks. Like, there's a cantrip, Irresistible Prey, for one green mana, you do that. So that's like three cards that you want to add with Anzrak before you start becoming very, very scary. And just the odds of like somebody either you not getting but the tell right her, what cards. What if I just hit you? Yeah, like like even eight without card. without you That's blocking, eight, right? <laughs> That's but, an, but it has four toughness. I'm going to trade with it. Sure, maybe you will. But like the thing here is like I think if you swing in, you only need one thing, and it's just to make sure it either gets indestructible. And that's it. If they if they don't block, who cares? That means they just took eight, and that means now yeah. they can only take exactly two more hits, and they're dead. If it's your commander, so if it's your if commander, it's, it's significantly yeah, scarier because significant. that eight is a third of your life. If it's not your yeah. commander, it's like just eight. Oh I, I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I think you're missing. Like you, you, you need the combo pieces. You need the lure to force the block. You need the indestructible. And if you want to be super cheeky, you give your opponents indestructible too. Mm -hmm. and you can get infinite combats. But if all you're after is an extra combat, we have like a million cards that do that for way cheaper uh, in red. Trample. Right? Yeah. Like you need so many pieces. So that's why I think it's like a build around. Like the deck, that the Anne's Rag deck will be a very good deck. I don't know, very good, but it'll be a strong deck. It'll be a very interesting deck. But I don't think you can take Anne's Rag and throw it in a generic ghoul deck. I think you'd be much better off with just an aggravated assault or relentless yeah. assault or or whatever, like one of those cards. Yeah. Uh, if if you're trying to get the extra combats, but if you're like a, a lure, indestructible, like fancy combat shenanigans one, then then Anzrag would fit the bill. I think Richard's right because oh, I... like a lot of the cards that you're gonna combo with Anzrag are cards that you're not gonna play in other decks. Like you're not just running random lures and these indestructible yeah. spells and must be block stuff. So it really is like yeah. And the 99s is probably pretty bad actually. The more I think about it, but as a commander, mm. yeah, Voltron, I was you can just be... like team or battle rage this and forget, forget the extra combats. I just <laughs> one hit you with this right. Like yeah. a black blade reforged and a team or battle rage will probably kill someone right. Yeah, I was going to put it in my Xenagos deck, Xenagod, uh, Xenagos God of Revels. Uh, it works really well with Anzrag in terms of each combat, you double its power uh, and toughness. So it gets plus eight, plus eight each time. And then it's plus 16, plus 16 if it gets a, a second combat and everything. And it gives it haste too. Mm -hmm. So those are two of the things that you really want Anzrag to get. But then you still need the lure effect. So I think Anzrak's still better as a commander because then you get to run the lure effects. Whereas like in Xenagod, I don't have any lure effects. Um, so, but it could show up in some 99s, but just, yeah, it's, it's a better commander. It's, you know, it's also a, a funny salt card. So when you're dying to Anzrag, you can choose to block or not block to give the Anzrag player another combat after death. <laughs> <laughs> so you can do a little king-making on your way out as you're, as yeah, you're beaten true. down by the mole god. <laughs> uh, uh, this was an interesting one. World Souls Rage. It's a gruel card with X, red, green. Sorcery. It deals X damage to any target. Put up to X land cards from your hand and or graveyard onto the battlefield tapped. Bees across the board. Is this card good? Are we gonna? Are we playing it? It's it's because you can you can hit someone's face and just try to ramp for four. Out of yeah. the graveyard is interesting. Can we actually make it work without self milling or something like that? Or I mean, you're a lands deck, right? You're definitely a lands deck. You want to be a lands deck, like That's Lord Windgrave. But even right. as a yeah. lands deck, you need stuff in the graveyard, right? Well, not yeah. hard to do. Lord Windgrace is pretty easy at filling your yard up, right? And I'm talking like for either Creature Windgrace or like Planeswalker Windgrace, either or. That's exactly the home this is going in. In that home, this card will probably be like a either a high A or something like that. It'll it'll feel insane in that deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you're playing like a land matter sack deck, it's really good. You wouldn't play for value though, right? You just need so much to go right, like. To get an explosive vegetation out of this, you have to draw two fetch lands in the first four turns. That's kind of asking a lot, right, to, like, get enough lands in your graveyard. I guess if you have a super flood out draw, you can play lands from your hand. But I think it's really about the lands in the graveyard for the most part. So I think it's, like, it's a good card. It's just a narrow card that only only certain decks are going to want. What if you view it as, like, 
three mana, get one land, right? Like you probably can get one land or from your hand. Either it's a, a weird explore or a ramp, but and it's also somebody. a split card <laughs> that's a fireball. So when you have like quadrupled your mana as green, you just shoot someone in the face for 30, <laughs> right? Like that. <laughs> that is, it's Kodama's reach. Except the the card you're drawing is not a land. It's like a fireball that you can okay. use in the game. Is that it is a finisher. Does that do anything yeah. useful? Or like, nah, that's still too cute. I'd rather just Archmage is a charm and call it a day. Or I Archdew mean, is charm. <laughs> it, it does, but I think I'd still want to be like a ramp lands matter decks where I'm gonna have like enough mana because it, it is kind of inefficient, right? It's two and then X. So like to get a meaningful amount of damage out of this, you really gotta have a lot of lands on the battlefield. So I think even with that upside, it's still something you got to be in the right deck to really take advantage of. All right. Uh, War Leader's Call. Three mana Boros enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield under your control, War Leader's Call deals one damage to each opponent. Two A's from Krim and Seth. Two B's from myself and Tomer. This is a solid I card. Sweet. Card, right? Well, what's the two mana enchantment uh, that impact, impact tremors? tremors. Is that what impact impact tremors. tremors. So and there's a two mana enchantment tremor... plus one plus one. I think yeah. it's, I don't remember one. Glorious this is anthem. an anthem effect plus a, anthem. A, an impact tremors. I love that. This is, it's nothing flashy. It's nothing like wild. It's not going to be like, oh my God, it's going to jaw drop the whole table. But it is very good. It's just a very solid card. I, I can't really, I don't think there's much more to say. But why so, do you guys put an A it, though? Is Impact Tremors an A card? That, okay, that's a very so, specific. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Impact Tremors is not an A card, but I think that the biggest reason I'm hyped about this card is the problem with Impact Tremors is it's very much a B card that you can only play in certain decks. But having a Anthem attached to that makes it much more uh, widely applicable. It's something you can play in way more decks now. So that's what I'm excited about. There's a lot of decks where I like think, oh, I would like an Impact Tremors. I'm like, well, it's just not going to do anything a big percentage of the time, so I can't actually play it. This is always going to be bu uh, buffing my creatures, and then it's also going to be really good in any sort of like go wide making token style deck where the damage really adds up. Have you ever seen like a, a perforate? on the battlefield just how fast people die once you're taking two damage every creature comes into play this is only half of it but still like it really really starts to add up and it's also a way to close out the game without actually having to attack your opponent get through blockers get through mm -hmm. ghostly prisons you just like play your creatures and your opponents die from you burning them out so uh, I think this card's really good maybe A is like a little aggro as far as the rating maybe it's like a high B but uh, it's one of my favorite cards from the set and I think it's gonna I think it's gonna punch up I think it's gonna be better than people think i'm i'm slamming this in my go wide tokens decks because it's just a, anthems are great in go wide tokens they're the best home for those but also like you said uh sometimes it's difficult to close out games you know like if you eat too many board wipes or the board say gets gummed up like either you don't get any good good attacks or you know if you attack uh you need to commit too much and you'll die on the backswing and that's when Impact Tremors is really good. Once everybody's low enough and you've dealt damage by attacking, which the plus one plus one helps with, then you can finish things out with the burn effect to close out the game. So having both on the card means it's never going to be dead mid or late game in uh, Go Wide Tokens, and I really like it there. I was going to say it closes the game for the other reason. So a lot of times, <laughs> like you have impact tremors out, and then you you play all your creatures, and you're like, well, that's it. I got a bunch <laughs> of one ones, and I pinged everyone, <laughs> but I'm out of creatures. You can slap this down as an anthem and then like swing in with your creatures to to finish them off if you don't have like you know more stuff, right? So yeah, I think it's solid. Uh, that's dope, right? Like that's that's cool. Like the fact that now, like once once you're done deploying all your threats, you can also turn it into like now these one ones are threats so yeah it's like that good after you've played all your creatures and also good before you've played all your creatures which i think just means it's good if you're playing a bunch of creatures next up we got ans rags rampage what this this, this no. ans rag character just came out of nowhere with all these cards huh <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> five red no expects ans rag. so five mana value in red Destroy all artifacts you don't control, then exile the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of artifacts that are put in the graveyard from the battlefield this turn. You may put a creature card exiled this way onto the battlefield. It gains haste. Return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. Seth with the A. Everyone else with the B. Seth, you really like this card. D. 
do you play? I mean, it's Vandal Vandal Blast. It's, well, it's, it's, I would if my Vandal Blast also just put a free creature into play with haste so I could smack you for a bunch of damage. But even if I don't play Vandal Blast, just objectively, if you look on like EDH Rec, a lot of people play Vandal Blast. It's like literally one of the top five red cards in the entire format. It's like super, super high up there in the rankings. And isn't this just like way better? Like if you were playing Vandal Blast, don't you just always play this instead or play both of them? I personally wouldn't i think this card is really good if you're in a stompy deck like if you're in any sort if you're in an anzrag deck and you have just a big stompy creatures in the 99 this card's fantastic right you can drop like a six drop or something hit somebody for six you know and then it's also like cart pseudo card draw in the same sense that you put it back to your hand afterwards that's awesome but like I do appreciate Vandal Blast's um, flexibility, where sometimes you don't need to spend five mana to wipe the board of everything. Sometimes there's just like one artifact that's just got to go, and you could just pay one mana and then go about your business. Um, so I like that aspect of it. But if I'm in Stompy, this card's awesome, right? Who casts their Vandal Blast for one? Really? Is that a thing that happens? Don't you hold it and sometimes. try to get max value to sometimes get those clues and those treasures? Do. And <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to do what you got to do, all right? I, I mean, you th you do I ever want to spend two mana to cast a Cyclonic Rift? No, but I've had to do <laughs> it, right? <laughs> What's your thinking, Richard? You just don't like Vandal Blast? Is that the Vandal Blast is bad? I don't even bad? play Vandal Blast anymore. Yeah. That, that's my question to you guys. Like, I don't even play Vandal Blast anymore, but I'm a Boom Pile believer. So if you're not the Boom Pile <laughs> believer, like, you got to get rid of the artifact somehow, right? <laughs> get rid of your stuff. I would say I this, buy a board. If your deck has I'm glad that in it, you're... then I think it is 100% <laughs> correct to play this. For the, the yeah. sole chance of just Ansrag Rampage into an Itali trigger, any Itali, uh, you're good to go. So I think that is the correct line. If you have ETBs in your deck, this makes it worth it to to play Vandal Blast. Otherwise, I would have played Vandal Blast. <laughs> <laughs> like the creature mode. What if they? What if it didn't blow up artifacts? What if it was just look at the top like the eight or ten cards of your library? Put a creature into play with haste. Blah blah blah. Wouldn't that cost like five mana? <laughs> Wouldn't isn't it like priced incredibly yes. aggressively for what this card is doing? But if they have no artifacts because a farewell just went off, then it's a five man to do nothing and also get nothing. No. Right? Yeah, right. That, so there, that's there's true. An old, there's an old cons card. I remember it was like a green one, like six mana. And you can get like, you can look at the top like six cards of your library and you can put two creatures onto the battlefield immediately with it. See the unwritten. And yeah. nobody. Yeah, but I, I I remember it being played a little bit way back when it came out, but I haven't seen it in ages. So I assume just like slamming for five mana a big creature from your, the top of your library is not not where people would want to be. But what if it's a tally? It attached to it. What if it's a tally? <laughs> okay, well if every, if every single creature is in my deck is a tally, then yes. I mean, if you're playing red, you probably have a tally, so then you probably can run this thing just to make the tally way better, right? No. You know what? Because no, because everybody who I'm playing against is running the one ring and it doesn't blow up the one ring. So then. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You just tally and then you change together and then all you your get... tallies yeah. and somehow <laughs> overwhelm the one ring. It's fine. That's true. You mill them out. All right. Uh, Delny Streetwise Lookout. So three mana white. Legendary creature human scout 2-2. Two -two. Creatures you control power two or less can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater if an ability of a creature you control with power two or less triggers that ability triggers an additional time we got uh three b's and then tomer with the a tomer's the weenie believer <laughs> richard you were supposed to be an yeah is this not a richard I'm surprised time? okay picture this roaming throne but instead of four mana it's three and it means your spirit companion is ETB, draw two cards for two mana. Your Skyclave Apparition exiles two things. Your Welcoming Vampire draws two cards, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Like, there's a lot of two power creatures. Like, that's kind of the shtick of, of white. So there's a lot of cards that Delany just randomly works super well with. And you could build an entire deck just going on two powers or less. And it's actually really sweet. And then it, I think it's even better in the 99, right? Like there's a lot of commanders that happen to be two power or less that have really powerful triggered abilities that you could run Delny in or uh, card uh, commanders that care about like small creatures like Alicia who smiles at death, who's all about reanimating two or less. So like 
this has this is like roaming throne. It's a specific roaming throne, obviously much more narrow, but it's like super ridiculous in the right deck, right? Yes, uh, in the right uh, yes. Deck. If Those you are playing really weenies, good. that trigger, <laughs> which is different than playing weenies. So like, a card <laughs> that's like, like all your vampire. <laughs> no, 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 no. So welcoming vampire, I think, is much more universal than this because if you play Downley and then you play loyal warhound, like, are you really gonna get that second ramp trigger? Like, Lord War on's a 3 1. Doesn't even oh, work. Uh, Night of the White Orchid. Are you really going to get the double? Like, no, right? I so, hope you, so you need to actually be running Spirited Companion and things that double, like that, the triggers you want to double, and they got to be weedy. That's a very narrow deck. Or, like, maybe not very narrow, but that's like, you got to build around it. You can't just slap this in a white deck and call it good because you might not have ETBs that matter, or they may be 3 1s, like Loyal Warhound, or they're like, you know, catch up wrap or something, which doubling doesn't help you. So, Dalny in a weenie deck, amazing. Best card in your deck, probably. Uh, anything that you want to add a blink effect to. So, if you're thinking, oh, I need to play uh, whatever that three mana instant is that blinks your entire board. If you're thinking I want to play that, Eerie then Dalny is like Eerie one of the... Interlude? <laughs> Eerie Interlude. Yeah. I... Then Dalny is a strong consider. But if you don't want to be playing those, then like, it's a build around, right? It... It a is roaming throne. It's a build around, but I think it's a little more flexible than that because this is uh, worded like, oh no, uh, what's the wizard one? Harmonic Prodigy. It's worded like Harmonic Prodigy. So it's not just ETB triggers, it's all triggers. So this works in like Soul Sister decks, like all the life gain as other things are entering the battlefield is going to be gaining you double life. It works in Disguise decks. It's double triggering your ward uh, to protect your team. It works with attack triggers, like an Ishin style deck where any attacking triggers are going to double trigger if you put your Sword of the Animist on a small creature, you get to ramp a couple die, like things like that. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Plus, I think one thing people over underrate on this card is just the ability to attack with your weenies. Like, it actually is going to close out the game. The fact that your opponent's big creatures can't block all your weenies is going to allow you to do some, like, pretty sweet alpha strike stuff where you can just get in through your opponent's defenses and uh, and actually win, which I love that they made that this way because Panharmonicon decks have a, a tendency to dirtle a little bit <laughs> and not close out the game and just generate value. But this one might accidentally take some people out, too. So... I think the card's actually, I think it's very strong. You still do have to play it in only a, like a specific deck, a certain number of decks. But in those decks, I think it's a really good card. Can you imagine you got like a 1-1? One, one, you can finally break Explorer's Scope. You attack, yes. you break two lands off Get the top of your there. library. <laughs> Broken. <laughs> finally Broken. break it. Yes. <laughs> Broken. We did it. <laughs> That's actually... <laughs> Evasion. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny, or you like curiosity, <laughs> like yeah. any any like curiosity creature. But again, these Ooh, are very specific things. Birds. I don't think you just slam this in a white deck. You got to have birds with toss birds. Birds with toss. Double up your toski trigger. Think of all the yes. cards you will draw. Yeah. <laughs> bird toski. We've broken. Sorry, it. <laughs> the, the bird deck is very lean and optimized. There's no there's no room for the Delphi Streetwise lookout. <laughs> I'm sorry. It gives them even better evasion. Not only do they fly, but they're also sneaky about it <laughs> it's it's for the bird mirror i got you i, I, I got I it okay <laughs> uh doppelgang uh x x x green blue uh sorcery for each of x target permanents create x tokens that are copies of that permanent so if this x is, is one you can choose mana. one permanent that's five mana you, you choose one permanent, create a copy of it. If X is two, uh, you choose two permanents, and of each of those, you make two copies, and then et cetera, et cetera. And that'd be uh, seven, no, wait, two, that would be eight mana. <laughs> Dude. Is this good? We all we all <laughs> said B, said... and then Seth Seth is high on these cards. Ooh, hey. I, I mean, I gotta I gotta represent my boy Phil here. You know this is going in every yeah. Phil deck for the rest of time. <laughs> is it's not good in every deck, but it's good in any deck that makes a lot of mana, right? Like, think of any deck Phil would play. This is going to be one of the best cards in your deck. So getting a copy of one thing for five mana, bad. Getting a copy of two copies of two things for eight mana, you're kind of getting interesting. It's really the 11 plus mana where this is like an absurd, like, game ending right of replication on, like, a whole bunch of steroid style card. So I think that, like, people play right of replication, right? If you play right of replication... You would probably just like rather have this, nine. assuming you're in Simic. Yeah. No. No, I think I'd rather have really right replication. No. So right, you this can play for so four. Much better. And, yeah. Right, you can play for four, and it's fine. But when you play for nine, you're not just choosing like 
a bunch of random creatures. You're choosing the very best creature on the battlefield, and you're getting five copies of them. And that's, I think, what makes it so good. This one, you have to choose separate targets each time, right? So, like, if you're doing it for, what, eight or whatever, then you're getting, you have to get two copies of just two. Of and, yeah, two. it's good, but it's you're not getting, like, five of the best right so but, i i think but, you have to spend like but, 11 but, or but something 11 yeah 11 plus is a sweet spot also <laughs> worth mentioning it's any permanence it's not just creatures yes. you can use this as a yeah. ramp spell like you can for eight mana copy two lands your plus four <laughs> mana like oh, but I'm, I'm just trying to exemplify the flexibility of this card like you can be copying artifacts enchantments like that's a huge yeah. difference between this and writer application like imagine having i don't know like <laughs> nine one rings or something. you got them yeah nine banner <laughs> monogons mm -hmm. harmonic not nine ring rings is legendary. yeah i guess so, yeah. yeah you need an extra step to get to that but <laughs> you know what i want to do with this I, I I want Tomer to have a Kiki Jiki, and I want Krim to have a Pestermite, and then you doppelgang the combo and win. <laughs> oh, <laughs> off yes. with somebody else's like like That's you combo off funny. two players' boards like that would be hilarious use of this. I, uh, that would yeah, be I mean, it can be strong, funny. but I don't know. I think right of replication is more consistent, and you get to really get the best one. Oh, but this is so expensive. Five mana, so like five mana, and then seven mana, like or eight mana. It's like so much. There's definitely homes for it. Like, let's say you're a lands deck, your Simic lands, like your AC or something like that. Eleven mana. That's that's child's play. Like, if your deck is doing its <laughs> thing, your eleven mana is, is chump change. That's when you're you're really hurting Sadly, for land. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you just need you just need something to dump your mana yeah. into. And this I think doppelganger. You got to like half the cost yeah. when evaluating this card. It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, free, it actually. is. It will win the game if you spend enough mana on it. I think, and it's also a very exciting card. Like people are going to be people like, oh my god, I doppelganger where X equals five, and it's like. It's uh, you know, it's really exciting. It's very exciting. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> All right. Aurelia, the law above. Five man of Boros Angel. 4-4. Four, four. Legendary creature, obviously. Flying Vigilance Haste. When a player attacks with three or more creatures, draw a card. Whenever a player attacks with five or more creatures, it deals three damage to each of your opponents, and you gain three life. Okay. Bees I think this board. card is sweet. Right, mm -hmm. this card is. I think this card's pretty sweet, in Commander. I I was like looking at it for uh, from a standard point of view, and it was it was okay. But then, Commander, whenever a player attacks with three or more creatures, you draw a card. I do worry that sometimes that people will just hit you with two creatures, which is more than yeah. enough to like hurt you. But <laughs> you know, like hey, like this this is this is a sweet card. Maybe in like a goad deck or no, you can't even goad actually. Mm -hmm. They have to attack you. Right? No, 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 no. no, no, no. It's for anybody. Yeah, yeah. You have to yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with three or more creatures. Go to everybody. This is that. That's the way you go about it. And I think this is going to be a huge piece in a go deck. So they still hit you if they want. <laughs> like, sure, like prevent sure. no go no. yeah you have to pair it with goad and force attack but like you get the value of it yourself like if you're a go wide token deck you know you can very easily at least draw a card and more likely if you're attacking with five plus creatures you're going to still be doing like nine net extra damage and getting three life that's not bad and then yeah if you like drop like a famico de low blood and all your opponents have to attack every single combat or better you go to everybody's creatures um then you're just going to be getting more cards and also it's like a 4/4 flyer with uh, haste and stuff like it's doing damage in the air yeah, this is great for five mana. I mean, it's one of those creatures, right? So uh, if you're attacking, you kind of only need two additional creatures because Aurelia is coming down with haste to be the third creature. I think that's the home I was excited about. Like, it's good in Goad for sure. Also just good in decks that are attacking with a lot of creatures. You play this and it's going to be drawing extra cards each turn. And then you're probably going to get some free value on your opponent's turns as well. It doesn't seem that unrealistic, like that this is going to potentially trigger two or three times each turn cycle in the late game. Cause it's not even like attacks a specific player with three or more creatures. Like it's if Richard attacks with three creatures, period, like he can go one, 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 I'm still going to get to draw a card. So unless your opponents are just going to stop attacking, you're probably going to be drawing a lot of cards during combat. Would you stop attacking? Would you? No. If you had three creatures you want to attack with. <laughs> no. Would you say I'm gonna no. attack with two instead? No. How can you instead? stop attacking? Well, yeah, like, maybe in that no, exact just... scenario, I might attack with two. But, yeah. <laughs> but if you have like eight creatures, there's no way you're gonna be like, I'll leave six yeah. of them here so I cannot let you draw a card. Yeah. I heard all your arguments. 
and I downgrade to a C. <laughs> really? You don't like it? <laughs> what? This seems like so a I, I was kind thinking about so, so so you know what a card I don't like is 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 Minas Tirith. And that requires you to attack with two creatures and you draw a card. So if some like if someone's but attacking man. with three creatures or five creatures, the game is usually ending. Like you you can't normally attack profitably with that many number of creatures, especially in the type of deck this goes in. Like if they're weenies, then you've just chumped attacked into people and you've you've drawn a card, which is kind of mad. Or if someone's like actually hitting for lethal, then you just burn the table for three, gain three life. Like that's not the finisher you're looking for. You count the number of creatures you have and that you can swing with. Usually it's not five. Usually it's not even three. Usually it's like one or two. And then when someone's swinging, they're going for lethal. And Aurelia is not Moonshaker Cavalry. Like it doesn't end the game when you play this and then swing with the board. You need to actually have a finisher. And if you have a finisher, then what the hell's Aurelia even doing for you? <sighs> so it it seems nice in theory, but like who is sending three creatures in combat, surviving somehow and continually doing it to let you draw cards? Like just play trouble in pairs and draw all the cards without the effort. <laughs> like I, I I don't know. I, I feel attacking with multiple creatures and having them live without being in a winning position is very hard. And Minas Tirith is a perfect example. Same with like the the sword where you attack with two people. Same with I think like Pippin or Mary, like one of those Lord of the Rings sort of the legendary ones. People. But you have to build around it, like very specifically yeah. to have your creatures survive combat because it's very hard to but get that many creatures and then not die in the backswing and not have all the creatures die and like you just drew a card. Like eh. But what about but, the go deck, Richard? The go deck. I don't know. How how often can you mass goad the board? And if you mass goad the board, did you need to play Aurelia to draw cards? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess there might be the, easier ways to draw was a go deck. And I tell let me tell you this. I had trouble going against anything. <laughs> <laughs> let alone well, that's like, because that, no, no, that, that Okay, a Rich, con. Richard, that's let me yeah. con. let me speak your language, Richard. You get three creatures, you attack yep. so you can draw a card. And then you yeah. fog yourself to prevent the damage so your creatures live. How about that? So that, how about that, that? exists. It's called reconnaissance. <laughs> so reconnaissance yes. is a light enchantment that lets you pull your creatures out of combat. Eh? That was like a like a five-card combo to draw a card. <laughs> was that where I wanted to be? <laughs> was that where I wanted Reconnaissance to be? is amazing, though. It's legitimate a really good card. Like, we don't, do I don't that. think you feel we bad do adding that. that. You can put Iroas, too, to prevent the damage your attacking creatures get. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. That's kind of cool. All right. Uh, next up, <laughs> immortal obligation. So two mana instant return target. Uh, it's white return target creature from an opponent's graveyard to the battlefield under their control. The duty counter on it for as long as that creature has a duty counter on it, it is goaded. Can't attack you or permanent you control and can't block creatures you control. We are very split on this. Krim and Tomer with the A's, Seth and myself at C. I am. I am shocked that you put. The white skull winder at C. Yeah, what is dude. going but on? You this don't get a card. Skull white skull skull you don't get a card. You're just giving your opponent a, your a card. <laughs> no, but you you choose <laughs> you what choose they get. What back, you're reanimating. And you can politic with them, right? Like if somebody has a rex sage or something, you'd be like, all right, you get back to rex sage. What are you going to be blowing up with it? And be like, okay, I'll blow up the mutual threat. Or somebody's attacking into a, like an arch enemy's attacking into a player, and you'd be like, hey, I can give you a a, a blocker to eat that threat. You know. You want to do yeah. that for me? And then they're goaded for the rest of the game. They, they're no it's threat in, to you. It's speed. Yeah, it's their bashing. You could have it's... just played Generous Gift and done all of why this do... without having why situational I... cards <laughs> and graveyards. It's... But why it's would so you good. You have somebody do the dirty work what? for yes. you, Rich. Why would I spend so so goaded? Winder <laughs> makes someone do the dirty work for you, but it gives you the gas you wanted anyway, right? Because you were Rex aging, or you were uh, eternal witnessing anyway. This does the nothing for you. The gas is them you. punching them in the face at but instant speed. This has so many ways to go bad, because A, there could be nothing in a graveyard worth doing. B, they could blink, or they could, I don't know, play Vampire Ooh, Hexley. Solemnity, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, like, there, there are lots of things they Hexley. can do to do this. And, like, you, you're... You're relying on the fact that there's an answer and they're willing to go along with it. And there's nothing you can do if they don't want to go along with it. So I, I don't like that card for this reason. I'm sure there's some funny instance where this will blow people out. Oh, yeah. But I don't yeah. know if that's a consistent good. It's like mana tide. It's like hilarious when it happens. <laughs> but do you really want to put that in your deck for non-beam value? Like, I don't know, right? Like, I feel this is one of those cards. 
I'm going to predict this that this is, is going to be Richard's favorite card by the end of the year. <laughs> this card is like such a Richard card. You guys this is like politics. I like politics where I win no matter what. <laughs> right? This like, like if you try to fight me, I'm like, don't worry. I got an answer for this. This doesn't allow me to do that. Like, Skull Wanderer, you get your card. You get, like, you, you get your card regardless of what the other person is doing. <laughs> <laughs> yep, this like good. the ceiling's super high, right? Where there's gonna be those blowouts, but the floor is also super low. So I think it makes sense how split we are. Like if the floor is like literally uncastable, do nothing. Why is this in my deck? Isn't oh, it? sure. Like, the floor is like incredibly. But, but, like, come on, it, this is so that, like that, exactly. Come on, <laughs> right? Come on. Like, what, like what, 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 what if you're playing a set and he's playing a, a panharmonic on deck? You really get an immortal obligation mm, to stuff yeah. back to the get me back my like, flip. There, there are many ways you. for it to go wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, then maybe we don't tar target him, okay? But like that's fine. And then Krim is playing creatureless control on the other side, yeah. so you're like, cool. Hey, I, <laughs> creatureless control still has creatures. Okay? Oh, you can like instant speed uh, uh, reanimate his opposition agent. Yeah, you can do that on my bow right? It, it is cool that it's an instant speed that does up the ceiling potential. As low as the floor is, the ceiling is high. Where you like cast this during combat, get back a creature, it blocks something that's attacking that you want to get rid of, and then like beats down your opponents. It seems fun. I just don't know if it's good. I don't know what deck I'd put it in. What deck would you guys put it in? Like just any deck just for the meme value kind of? Like any, that kind any of deck, deck where I want more YouTube views. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, really? Someone a feels a you just immortal obligation to bow masters it and tell the person to like kill the wheeling person or whatever, right? Like kill there's like, so many funny lines. Yeah, but how, how is that not sick? It's right? mandatized. Yeah, it's, it's basically it mandatized. Is, it's it hilarious. Yeah, but yeah, it's 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 power sick. level. It's so good. But also <laughs> I think it's legit a good card in goat. Like a, a goat. So it benefit it benefits off goat synergies, and then yeah. like a really the law above gets better. Nelly gets better. Like a bunch of stuff can be keyed off of you giving your opponent another creature to must be attacked anybody but you. I mean, that's good. It's nice. All right, and the memes. <laughs> the memes. It's, it's two mana. The investment on it is too so low. It's, <laughs> it's, it's cheap. You would play. It's you so would play good. Shadow of Doubt and Trick Vine. I don't know if I want to believe you. I, hey, 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 yo! Shadow, shadow of Doubt should more play. Gas. Actually, okay. Shadow of Doubt is gas. You could uh, stifle. Uh, I would play of Shadow of Doubt over Brainstorm in Commander. I mean, the most important metric is not power level; it's meme value, right? So maybe, yeah, yes. maybe Immortal Obligation is S tier. S tier. <laughs> All right, uh, Portal Manipulator, four mana. It's Hybrid Azorius. It's a three-two creature, human wizard with flash. It enters the battlefield during the declare attacker step. Choose target player and any number of target attacking creatures of their opponent's control. Those creatures are now attacking that player. Uh, I hate this card. Grim at A. a so no, that can be B. B. No, no, Richard no. That should be a C. I, I, that should be a C. What? It's a four mana what? flag. It's a four mana. It's got the same <laughs> problem that Ink Shield has, which is why in the world am I going to leave up five mana every turn in hopes of this going well? So it's just too much mana, right? Like, no, it's a blinkable <laughs> fog. Yeah, it's yeah. What? I already got a stonehorn. The colors that you can blink all day it. long. <laughs> Do Dead Eye Navigator blink this bad boy? Here we oh, go. <laughs> I already hate playing against this card, and it hasn't even come out yet. Like all the Brago decks, all the like, any mm. type of Blink deck is going to be uh, abusing okay. the heck okay. out of this, and it's going to be so obnoxious. I'm putting in my Zedru deck, obviously, because there's a Blink package, and I can give it away after using it. But the repeatability, yeah, the repeatability, yeah. I actually like the the blinking yeah. repeatedly. That actually, I can get behind. It. Okay, so if we're going, it's B because it's good in like Brago and Blink decks. Okay, maybe I'll go back to B. I'll go back to B if that's the if that's the reasoning. Yeah. I think it's just like a generic good card. I don't think Wait, if I don't you think like, you can just play this I mean, generically. Yo, hold on, hold on, Richard. You like hold on. the record. Richard, this is you better love than the that. fog meta. This is better than a fog. It blanks this all the damage fog. that goes to you and just kills somebody else. I, I say Ink Shield is nigh unplayable and like Agreed. straight up single Ink green Shield fog is, is a million five times meta. better. Oh yeah, this, this is five five so many games. <laughs> this is much <laughs> better. Okay, so if you're and playing the Crim game, you can leave four up, then unexplained absence or portal manipulator. <laughs> but most other people would use their mana during their turn and, and not have four mana sitting around to fall. Like, we don't play Please. Settle the Wreckage. 
even though we always knew I about place it. I all the wreckage. It's, it's hard to hold four up because you don't know if you're going to die or not. <laughs> These right? guys desperately need uh. to play Ink Shield. You're on paper now. You have no excuse. They're Just so... try Ink Shield. Just give it one shot and it's going like, to overperform. You know how it works, know not how it works Homer. You. Yeah. <laughs> what? How these cards work is you remember the one game where it worked and you got them, and your brain forgets the ten games where you died holding up five mana every turn as people. How can you die? You oh, how cards. can you die with <laughs> outside of combo? <laughs> this literally prevents you from dying. I'm so the story is that you guys don't believe in the fog mana, but see this four mana fog. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> this is not a fog. <laughs> this is not it's kill. Like, oh, this is like, yo, better than a zero mana. Better than a fog. <laughs> Kills people. It's a fog yeah, it that ends, murders it ends people. one person. How is that not sick? <laughs> it's so mm. good. I don't. I don't disbelieve fogs. I just want fogs to do more than just fog. And this kills people. <laughs> but it's, it's so, so much mana. It's, it's so, so much mana. mana. What? It's no, like it's perfect. <laughs> all right. If we play a game of Commander where we're allowed to hold up all our mana every game to cast unexplained absence <laughs> and portal manipulator, <laughs> then I'm with you. Yo, Yo, if I can believe can, Immortal playing Drago, yeah. you can actually pay even... four mana fog. <laughs> you can I'm actually die for it. How many man. times am I not playing Drago and I find my still <laughs> still leaving up mana? You can Immortal <laughs> Obligation this and then you can tag team to kill the third person. That's <laughs> so good. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Okay. One. Okay. We're we're gonna end it with another fog card that we're all over the place on. Oh, Suppressor Skyguard. Four mana Azorius. Two four human knight. When a player attacks you, if that player has another opponent who isn't being attacked, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to you. <laughs> this this card not Krim. A. <laughs> this Tomer and me. B. Seth at D. Stone unplayable. Yeah. I'm, I'm Stone up, unplayable. Wait, you would actually put this. So, okay, here's the problem I have with this card. Well, like, there's several, but number one is <laughs> it's a four mana two four. So it has absolutely putrid stats that are not going to do anything in a game of Commander. The other it thing flies. is, all your points got to do you complain about a two two, Seth. So I know you <laughs> ain't going to poop on the two four flyer. <laughs> but this, this doesn't really do anything most of the time, right? All all that you, the player has to do to make this not work is send a single 1-1 one, one at each other player, and then they can attack you with their other 10 creatures. Why did you pay 4 mana for that? Like, it's... what? When does this card actually work? Like, I don't understand ever, how this card is ever actually ever like going to do a, anything. You crawl space? Against Voltron. <laughs> they don't have enough creatures. <laughs> yeah, okay, if, <laughs> if you got one An Anzrag, that's your only creature that's going off, then okay, this is probably great. Yeah, no, but it, shut, <laughs> it shuts off all poke damage. Like, if they're not committing to an entire table, then they're not attacking you and that's awesome so it's like the first like eight or so turns you just don't have to be worried about it yeah you'll be killed with an alpha strike if their opponent has like 15 creatures and they can just be like blah kill the rest of the table then sure but up Excellent. until that point you're fine this is all how good swords seth seth it how good swords. do you know what you're not accounting for how well this plays with portal manipulator <laughs> <True. laughs> it's, it's also in the wrath I'm not even trolling like, This deck like, builds itself dude. Do you really want 4 mana permanents That need to sit out on the battlefield For like 8 turns to do anything You know how many wraths yeah. are in our meta Like, um, There's no way this is going to stick around long enough To do anything even if it did do something <laughs> And it doesn't It holds a dowsing dagger How about that you don't what, do you, believe. what do you think Richard You, you like 5 Where are you at with I, this I don't card? know why I put it as a B I might have been Smoking a little. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it's yes! with been set, but way worse. I think. Yeah, like way worse. Exactly. Than and you don't play Windborn. Like you, I always play Ghostly Prison, and then haters, cut it off. Dude. And then if for some reason haters. I need creatures, I might play Windborn Muse. But Windborn Muse eats a wrath. Like I'm not comfortable putting it on the battlefield <laughs> and having it immediately removed and getting getting no value. Maybe if you're like a human knight deck or something, you can make it work. Okay, maybe D is harsh. Maybe C. It's like okay, but it's not like I'm not putting in a generic deck. Like Ghostly Prison yeah. goes oh. in. Windborn Muse does not. Suppressor Skyguard does not. It's a flying it's... griffin. Why is it not a bird? I don't know. <laughs> it's but... not even a griffin, yeah. It's a human knight. <laughs> Y'all are out here doing some serious haterade. Like this card is sick, dude. Okay. <laughs> just, I, I think it Where actually gonna... works late game in the sense that most people will not have enough creatures to spread the love and kill you. But 
a single spot removal does remove this, right? So it's incredibly <laughs> I mean, sure. fragile to be sure. hiding behind. Dies to Doomblade, uh, like pretty much negates every card we talked that, this about. This is your defense. Right? Like, okay, okay. Would you tap out and play Suppressor Sky Guard, or would you just leave four mana up and hold, play Portal Manipulate? Yeah, play that. Five. I mean, obviously, <laughs> they go together. They go together. Yeah. You play that Sky Guard first, like, and like, then I don't you hold Sky Guard. Play this if I'm a, thinking I'm gonna die, right? Like, that, that's Dude, scary. Oh my <laughs> god. You just wait, all right? Just wait. I'm going to find a way to play this. I got, I got, I wish I could make this my commander. That would play the Settle the Wreckage, for the Rise. <laughs> oh, the Manipulator for the Alpha Strike, the Sky Guards for the Poke. You know, you, it's the one, two. It's the peanut butter to the jelly. You know, you got to have both. But that, that means worth... the poke's gonna get rat rat away though, <laughs> and same, same with your suppressor sky guard. <laughs> that that's the and, problem. And do you really even care about preventing the poke? Like if they're getting in with their esper set, yeah. is that worth playing a card to prevent? Uh, no, I'm I'm preventing like the eight yes. damage from what like if you a just random wall of creature. Wall of yeah, <laughs> block them. The it dies. The card, two mana blinkable, uh -huh. blinkable Tomer. Mm. Can't block twice. I can't that block twice. All right, no dude. So oh, wait. Uh, apparently this sick. podcast has revealed to me that Krim and Tomer believe in the fog meta. I'm starting at four mana and above. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a fog because you are dying. Like, okay, fog does nothing. Fog yeah, the, does nothing. Portal fog... manipulator ends somebody's no. day. It and ends Sky somebody's Guard game. the dowsing dagger, Richard. Come no, on. I, I, I don't see you guys playing deflecting palm in every deck. That's like kind of the same thing, right? <laughs> no, it's not. That card's actually, is that card's actually close pretty good, game. though, actually. I've died uh, to it like, before. We're, we're going to need a deflecting nope. palm podcast or something. <laughs> Fogs that do additional things podcast. That might be the hook. Heck yeah. <laughs> Spoiled so, like the fairies protection wins. <laughs> so that's our list. Uh, we, we have a big list of cards. We'll, we'll link it in the comments and show notes so you can take a look at the other cards. Let us know what you agree with, disagree with. Are you a believer in the four mana fogish cards, <laughs> let, let us four know. Four mana fog, fog. You are lying to people by telling them it's a fog. It is not a fog. It is useful. That's the thing. It is a kill. It's a finisher. It's a finisher. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our podcast. See you, everyone.